camera, right? So um, today we're going to be uh, doing some fun trays. Say hello when you get here and let me know where you're watching from. Um, I have bought uh, a bunch of trays at my uh, just local craft store. Uh, making them, I think, would be a lot stronger because I'm noticing that the bottoms of these aren't real uh, tough. Um, but we're going to go with it anyways. I guess we just can't carry like a whole bunch on the tray when it's done. Uh, I'm using a whole bunch of transfer scraps of different things. I've got some ideas laid out, so I, I'll let you know which, uh, which ones I'm using as I do them. I've got some ideas already planned on my trays that I've painted. Uh, and then we're going to be doing an epoxy resin uh, top coat. So uh, that's the part I think that takes us to the next level and the transfers look really awesome underneath them um, because it gives a nice high shine gloss and it's just a different way that you don't usually see these. So hi Susan from Southern New Hampshire. Where are you in New Hampshire? That's where I am too, Southern New Hampshire. Uh, I'm from the Keene area and my shop is in Peterborough, New Hampshire. Um, so let's get started. The only kind of glitch here is we're going to have to find something to chat about because epoxy takes 12 minutes to stir. So I'm going to have to kind of um, answer questions and kind of fudge that as we do it. And maybe it'll only take like eight minutes if I stir hard enough, but it is well worth the stir. So um, I am going to start by we're just going to paint a tray. I've got this one already. Here's my plan for this one. This is part of Japonica. So um, I'm putting a paint color under here. We won't be putting this transfer on today because it won't have dried enough, but I have got four trays that are all ready for us to put transfers on. So let's go ahead and start. I'm gonna shoot you down and hope I don't tip over. Hi Jackie and Patrice and Nancy. You need to learn how to epoxy. I have been um, doing epoxy um, for years. I'm just trying not to tip over my thing here. And so I can give you lots of tips. They're all a little bit different, but mostly the same. Um, so that is something that I know quite a lot about, especially uh, what not to do and how to avoid certain mistakes because uh, it can be tricky, but I've done some really cool furniture with it and I love to do it. All right, so I am just going to, um, I gotta tell you so far the hardest part of this project that I've started is sealing the tray and not getting drips all in here. That's kind of a tricky, um, I'll worry about the bottom later, but I'm basically just going to do um, I had to do two coats of paint so that I could get it on there good and then I sanded and then I sealed and that's what I have prepped for us to finish off today. Um, this color I think looks really really pretty underneath the japonica. Um, these are these boards trays that I got are unsealed obviously and raw and they really suck the paint up. Hi, Rosemary and Kim. So epoxy isn't quite an instant gratification, but it's kind of close in that you can just see how pretty the shine is when you pour it. I'll save all that information for when I'm mixing and we need some to chat about, right? So um, what kind of projects is everybody working on right now other than like raking and hopefully, um, Everybody's been okay weather-wise. There have been some, some pretty crazy weather things happening around the United States, floods and such. We have our regular um, springtime mud and, and um, rain and around here, which is fun if you have, uh, I have a yellow lab so she's wonderfully colored for going out and playing in the mud. She likes to come back nice and black, dirty. All right, this is the fun part. I prepped a bunch of these yesterday in a couple of colors. 
Um, and if you already know what transfer scraps you're using, I actually just figured out. I have so many scraps put aside that, um, you know, you could obviously coordinate your colors a little bit better. I did my colors that I wanted to do and then went through my transfer scraps and Honestly, because all the transfers look so good against all the colors, um, it's hard to it's hard to choose. You just have to do your favorite and try different combinations. One of my favorite, I mean, I love the transfers against the dark backgrounds, navy blue and black. You wouldn't think necessarily that that would be a good match. I'm gonna put that right on top of here now. But it is, it, they look really, really pretty against the dark colors, they're very striking. All right, so this will dry quickly and I'll get another coat of paint on it today and probably my top coat. So I'm gonna put that aside, that was pretty fast. So that's your first step in doing this project. Let's move that. Easy peasy. Somewhere I've got something to clean my hands off with. All right, next step is um, after you've done that, two coats and then a top coat. And um, then you're ready to put the transfer on. Leftover transfers, I store either flat or a lot of them, um, I, have, I have got them in the tubes that they came with and I roll them up really tightly. I'm kind of, I'm kind of moving away from that now that we've got the pads, obviously, because you don't need to, you just put them flat in the pads. Um, but I, they also, in the pad format, when you're saving them, you, have, you get less air in them. And when they're rolled up, I'm noticing, unless you've got an elastic or something to keep them tight, they've got a lot of air happening. I haven't had a problem with that yet, but it's just kind of on my mind because I've got some old ones rolled up. Um, like pieces of the Bohemian border and prim and trim and ones I know I can't get anymore that I would love to just make sure they're okay. All right, so I'm using my stick. Save all of these. They make great paint stirrers too and glue applicators. Oops, I don't know what that was. Something kind of wet. So we're going to, I'm going to show you catch a bubble on here because I, ha I have people ask all the time. So basically catch a wave or a bubble is you want to put a wrinkle in your paper. I'm going to show you because I'm hearing that it's hard to, so see that little space here. Let's see if I can get right in there. I'm, I'm putting air underneath right behind where my stick is. See, there's air, there's air in there. It's a bubble. And see how the bubble moves. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to try to just see that. Oh, I think you could see that. And I'm going to take that bubble and I'm going to push behind the bubble. You don't want a huge one. I have a couple customers that have talked to me about um, about how long it takes them to apply uh, a transfer. And I, I keep saying, well, I, I just have to show you because it really, it doesn't take long at all and you don't need to push super hard. And you guys see me do it every week. So the tr really the trick is that bubble right there, that now, when you've got a big piece like this and a bubble, we're gonna have to go back and make sure it's really burnished in. That's what we're gonna do next. So, oh, I love it. Okay, so let's talk epoxy. There are different kinds of resin. This is epoxy resin. This is not the quick stuff stuff. Okay, I have to stop stopping. Here's what I'm doing. I'm gonna put equal parts so I can start stirring. Um, I am not, I did not measure. I don't know how much these are gonna take. I'm approximating. But I am going to do two equal parts as per the directions. 
Um, you can buy cups that have the measurements in them. I am looking at um, a, a part of in here and measuring it to look the same. It doesn't say how many ounces, but I am making sure that they are the same. This is important. Okay, so I have quite a lot in here. I'm literally by like a hair. I want to make sure these are the same. Okay, so there's a resin and there is a hardener. Okay, let's cap those. All right, I am going to put the hardener into the resin. Now that I know they're the same, this is a lot more than I probably need for the trays that I have finished, but maybe we can do two more. while this is setting. Okay, so here's, how, here's what I know about the mixing part. It needs to be um, mixed. First of all, just follow the directions. There's a lot of different, um, there's a lot of different brands of this. Now this, uh, I will go back. I thought the epoxy was gonna be for molds. I don't know why I thought that. Okay, because as I was saying, now I'm going to start mixing and my time is 1.20, I believe, ish. If somebody could keep a little bit of time, maybe six minutes, that'd be awesome. Um, okay, so there's different kinds of resin. There is a uh, two-part epoxy. I believe it's called resin. It might not be called epoxy. I have a box here. When I'm done, I will show you that box. That, uh, there's one kind that sets up rather quickly. That's the amazing cast resin, and that's used for crafts um, to cast things. So that's probably why you are thinking of the molds. Um, that resin turns uh, white. There's a clear one also, but the one that I use turns white so that you know it's completely dry and you pop it out of the molds. Uh, that is completely different from the type of epoxy that I am using, which is used um, like on bar tops, on furniture. It's used as a uh, waterproof and he very high temperature heat resistant top coat. Uh, it gives a really glossy finish. I, whenever I do it on my furniture, people think it's glass on it. You know, that's, that's what it looks like is glass. So, are we caught up? Whoops. All right, so. Your space has to be level. Um, my, my table has a bump in it. I'm just trying to make sure I'm not on the bump. This is all gonna self level. This is actually warm now. I can feel the heat on it. It is definitely uh, heated up from sitting there. And I'm, I'm sure I've gone over the 16 minutes right now, so I am not worried about, uh, because I can feel the heat and I know it's mixed. Let's start with these three, because I'm kind of unsure about that last one there. Let me turn these your way so you can see how pretty they are. All right, so I am just going to pour. Go ahead and ask questions. I'm going to pour uh, and... will self-level but you can help it a little bit. I don't want a really thick coat just because of what these are. Obviously if you're doing furniture you can't do this but you just need a thin coat. I would do thicker on furniture, but this I just, I really am looking for the effect and the protection. So I'm gonna use it kind of sparingly because of the cost. Um, you could use a stick to spread it out too. You don't have to be tipping. I just find this to be the easiest way. It's kind of like doing um, 
like an epoxy pour or paint pour spreading out you have work time for this it should not be setting up it takes 48 hours to completely harden so you do have some time you don't have to rush now the biggest problem that I had when I first started doing this is uh, I, the back then I was working from home and so any sort of dust or debris um, little hairs it all shows up and so you need to really be um, in an area that is um, clean and does not have dust and dirt and dog hair and because once you get like a hair in this I'm trying to get it right into that corner there once you get a hair in this it is just um, you're kind of doomed you can't really pick anything out Okay, so I'm going to let this one sit and level out, and then we're going to move on to the next one, and we'll take care of bubbles. So there's number one. If I end up not having enough, that's okay, because I can do a second pour. Uh, you have to do the second pour within a certain amount of time. Can't remember. I would have to look on the package. Um, but if you want to do a second pour and you want it to stick to the first, which I've done uh, a few times because I, you know, if you don't see it, you might have a, an area that maybe didn't cover up the same. And so you want to go back and cover it. I can tell there's not going to be enough there and I'm going to run out. So basically I'm going to not have enough to do this last tray, I think. And so I'll end up mixing up a little bit more and coming back to cover it up once I look the time up. It might be like 12 hours. And, it, and the only reason for that time is to make sure that it is uh, will adhere to the first coat. Uh, I'm using Fama Wood. The, another one that I really like is Clear Cast Resin. Um, but they're all pretty much the same. Okay, so let's, I'll show you how. So if I want to fill that little hole in, this is all going to self-level, so I don't need to worry about that making a mark. I want this extra drip so I can... If this is already setting up while you're doing this, then you have uh, done something wrong. And I've only had that happen when I've gone back and tried to get a hair or something out of it after it had been um, sitting too long. And then it, it uh, made a mark where my finger went in and it didn't fix itself because it was already starting to set up. All right, so now I'm just trying to kind of cover that little corner right there. I love the glossy finish that you get over the transfers. I mean, this, how awesome is this one, especially on the dark color? I think it's really special. Um, so the next thing that you wanna, I'm gonna do the last tray now because I wanna make sure I use up my resin. I do not waste this stuff. Okay, now I just hope that this is gonna spread out and self-level because I can see like a, a little wave in there. There are air, there's all sorts of air bubbles in these and you can see them when you look to the side, you can see all these air bubbles. The way to get the air bubbles out, and if you can't see them now, you're gonna, let's see if you can even see them. Can you see air bubbles there? Heat gun pops the air bubbles, takes them right away. And this is how, when this dries, if you don't do this, you're gonna see little white dots. Okay, but the heat gun pops those right on the spot. A hair dryer is gonna blow around all of your dirt and dust, so you don't really wanna do that. Um, a heat gun is really the right tool. 
Um, God, you can do countertops with this. I mean, imagine like the Carrera uh, stamp. If you need to do like a quick, um, inexpensive fix for a bathroom or whatever, you um, can do the our Carrera marble stamp or any of the stamps and put an epoxy coat over your counter. And um, they're amazing. If you guys look up epoxy counters or resin counters, really amazing. All right, let me show you the other box real quick of the, sorry, I until somebody asked, I wasn't gonna get this. So, all right, so somebody asked about the resin. There's two different kinds of resin. This is the casting resin that we use to put into the molds. It sets up in like a minute totally different from what I'm using now. This is what I'm using now. There's all sorts of different uh, versions of this, but this is like a glaze coat. This is epoxy resin. This is craft resin, sets up in a minute. Um, big difference, so just make sure to read your boxes, okay? Because um, a craft resin would, would be kind of disastrous if you tried to use it the way um, I just did on these trays or on a countertop or anything. All right. Have an awesome day. I'll see you guys here next week. Thanks so much.